Okay, Professor Ono received his PhD degree from the University of Tokyo in 1982, after which he joined the Faculty of Engineering of Hokkaido University in Sapporo. He was a visiting scientist at IBM TJ Watson Research Center for a couple of years before moving to Tohoku University in Sendai, Japan as a professor in 1994. His current research interests include physics and applications of spin-related phenomena in semiconductors, as well as in metal-based nanostructures. He's received many prizes, including the IBM Sci Japan Science Award, the, U the IUPAP Magnetism Prize, the Japan Academy Prize, the Presidential Prize for Research Excellence in, at Tohoku University, and the 2005 Agilent Technologies Euro Physics Prize. He's a fellow of the Institute of Physics, an honorary professor of Institute of Se Semiconductors in the Chinese Academy of Sciences, and a fellow of the Japan Society of Applied Physics. Uh, please join me in welcoming Professor Ono. Well, thank you very much for your kind introduction. Um, and I would like to thank uh, Eli, Jeff, and uh, Naoki, and many others for, for giving, giving me this wonderful opportunity to be here. So uh, I will... I would like to discuss about uh, making CMOS non-volatile using magnetic tunnel junctions. Uh, these are my collaborators, and uh, you can find, uh, OK, uh, the last part is missing. But we have a website, uh, and you can find uh, many other materials that, uh, that we have used in various uh, conferences uh, if you're interested in uh, what we are doing. All right, um, let's see. So this is the outline of my talk. Um, for this audience, I don't think it's necessary to discuss this part, but just for completeness, uh, I will go over it uh, using one slide. Uh, and then I will introduce our concept of uh, spintronic-based non-voltage CMOS circuits. It's not just memory, but it's also logic. We, we all we use uh, CMOS as a, as a switching element, and we use a uh, non-volatile uh, magnetic tunnel junction, which is our spintronic-based uh, device, as a, as to put non-volatility into CMOS circuit. And I will show you the current status of magnetic tunnel junction, how far we have uh, gotten, and what, we, what, what, what do we need to do uh, to go further down. And then uh, a few, well, just one future direction and summarize my talk. So uh, this is uh, the current challenges. Uh, this is why we are here. Uh, as uh, transistor goes down, as the size goes down, the leakage current goes up. And we have this uh, huge standby power, which is almost comparable to active power if we don't do anything uh, to it. So we are using power gating and many other schemes. Uh, to reduce the standby power. Another thing is this interconnection delay. Interconnection delay. Uh, we separate, as we saw in uh, Philip Wan's uh, talk, for example, uh, we separate logic and memory in, in the current architecture. And, and therefore, we have, within a processor, we have to have a, a, a huge uh, interconnect. And uh, there is a signal signal bottleneck as well as uh, we, we use power uh, to charge and discharge those interconnections. And besides, memories are all volatile. So in order to keep the information there, we have to keep the, the voltage on or power source on. And uh, it leaks, and it results in the power consumption. So uh, uh, we would like to do something about it. Uh, our approach is to use non-volatile memory together with logic. Uh, the attributes that, that needs to be there uh, for, for the non-volatile memory is that it has to be scalable. You want to have a small non-volatile memory, uh, at least as small as your transistor. Uh, it has to work fast, uh, uh, hopefully as fast as transistors. Um, you need to have virtually infinite endurance because you're, you're using it in, in logic blocks. And uh, you cannot design your logic with, uh, with finite endurance. So uh, it has to have uh, virtually finite endurance. And uh, it also has to go into your interconnect uh, for, for the reasons I'm going to tell you uh, in, this, in, in, this, in, this slide, in the next slide. So it has to be back-end compatible. 
Well, I forgot to uh, list uh, many other uh, variations that uh, we learned uh, this morning. But a uh, spin device or magnetic tunnel junction can uh, have a uh, re reasonably high access speed. Uh, it's, it, has, it, it can read by non-destructive way. Uh, write endurance is OK. Uh, scalability, we believe it's OK. And operation voltage uh, is also, well, can be very low. So uh, it cannot be done by a NAND flash. It cannot be done by uh, FE RAM. And we also learned that uh, the emerging uh, back-end uh, non-volatile memories, not all of them, uh, or at least only <coughs> this one, can give us uh, a, a virtually infinite endurance, which is uh, needed for uh, logic operations or, or, or combining it with logic. So. Um, uh, I don't think I, I need to explain to you this, but uh, just, just in case uh, no, uh, magnetic tunnel junction is not familiar to some of you, uh, basically you have two ferromagnets, metal ferromagnets, separated by a thin insulating layer. The thin insulating layer is uh, so thin that you, your electrons can go through it by tunneling. And when you have a parallel uh, configuration, your resistance you can measure the resistance because you, 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 basically this is a tunnel, tunnel junction and, and resistance is low and antiparallel your resistance is high. So uh, tunnel magnetic resistance I define by resistance difference between the two states divided by low resistance. So when I say uh, I, need, I have 100% TMR ratio, tunnel magnetic resistance ratio, that means that I can uh, increase the base resistance by factor of two. So if I have 1 kilo ohm, I can make it to 2 kilo ohm. Uh, if I have 10 kilo ohm, I can make it to 20 kilo ohm. So it's not, it's not a huge difference, but we can uh, work with, with, with this. OK, I'm not going to uh, explain uh, the rest part of this slide. All right, uh, there are many uh, configurations that you can come up with, but, but these are the two combination, uh, configurations that we're working on. One is two terminal configuration. This is our, our tunnel junction here, magnetic tunnel junction. And, and this is, uh, the, again, another magnetic tunnel junction. Here, we have two terminals. So uh, we have resistance change. So we have to read the resistance. We also have to change the state of the memory if we want to do so. Uh, and and uh, so we. We interrogate the resistance of the device by small current and change the state of uh, the, uh, the parallel or anti-parallel configuration by running a large current. And it, the, the resulting configuration depends on the, uh, which way you run this large current you know, above uh, a certain threshold. OK, uh, and this one, uh, we have a uh, uh, domain wall, which separates the two two domains, and uh, when we move this domain wall by current, we can move this domain wall by current, and if we move this domain <coughs> wall in this side, then this junction becomes parallel, low resistance, and in, in, in this case, uh, it's anti-parallel, so it's in the high <coughs> resistance state. The good part of this is that we can separate uh, the, the, the right part from read part, uh, although then you have to have a, a, a larger area. You have to develop new technology, at least when you want to do, do this by domain wall. So this is more efficient in, in area-wise. This is not, but this is, uh, we can run higher current uh, through, the domain, through this part and, and switch it fast enough. Uh, also, uh, here we can actually not use a very large uh, TMR ratio because if your TMR ratio is very large, and if you if you and uh, because there is a threshold current density that you need to go beyond it in order to switch the state of the magnet, um, if the if the resistance well, well, if your TMR ratio is large, it means that uh, in the antiparallel state your your two terminal device resistance is large. And if, and if you require a certain current, threshold current to go through it, your voltage needs to be large. So there is a trade-off between the, the supply voltage and uh, the read part. So there are many design considerations that you can see. And usually what we end up with is that we're using uh, uh, 
of approximately 100% uh, TMR ratio. Okay, so well, when you have an array of these uh, two terminal devices, you can uh, construct a magnetic random access memory or magnetic resistive random access memory. And uh, so using those magnetic, uh, magnet, um, magnetic random access memories and, and variation of them, uh, we plan to uh, you know, uh, close this uh, speed gap between uh, various uh, storage and DRAM and SRAM uh, type uh, memories in the near future. A and in, in, in more distant future, we, we are planning to make it, make the system greener by uh, non-volatile logic and memory architecture, which I am going to explain to you in the next slide. So basically, uh, this is the current VLSI. Uh, we have logic part and memory part. And uh, logic and memory are both uh, composed of transistors, silicon transistors. And silicon transistors use surface of silicon. So it, and, the, the, and the voltage uh, level that uh, are not compatible. So we have to separate the logic part and memory part and we have to put them on the same uh, silicon surface. But when we, if we can uh, put this memory uh, in, the, in the interconnection part, uh, like, in, like in this one, this is cross-sectional picture of uh, our uh, random access memory, uh, MRAM me memories. If we put magnetic tunnel junction uh, in the interconnection layer, we can put this memory on top of logic plane. And at the same time, it's non-volatile, so we, we can forget about uh, the, uh, the parts that we are not using uh, because they do not require power to keep the information. We put memory in the back end, so immediately you can reduce the size of your chip by clever designing. And even uh, clever designing, you can use uh, part of memory into your processing, uh, and that reduces the transistor count. So, Reducing the transistor count makes your chip e even smaller. So, but I cannot be very quantitative at this stage because uh, it, it all depends on what application you have in mind. But in, in any case, uh, here we, we reduce the transistor count. Here we, we use uh, the area. So the area becomes smaller and smaller, which, is, uh, which can be used to counter uh, the interconnection delay and also interconnection uh, charging and discharging uh, power. Okay, uh, this is an example of uh, what we have done uh, in 2008 using uh, 180 nanometer process. Uh, so the details are not important, but so basically this is a, a full adder block. We just wanted to construct a, a circuit block to make sure that it works and we have uh, the processing uh, right. Um, uh, this, this full adder block is for image processing. We just want to compare uh, the input uh, or with, uh, with, uh, with uh, uh, information that we already stored on, uh, onto our magnetic tunnel junction. So there are four magnetic tunnel junctions on a CMOS circuit. And this is a, a diagram of operation. Again, the details are not important, but here we just turn off the power and immediately turn on the power and we started uh, uh, information processing. And, and this is so obvious because we are using non-volatile memory. Uh, but if you are using volatile memory, this is, this is not possible because you have to store uh, what you had in, 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 in a separate memory and you put it back and you start operation again. So uh, compared to those uh, volatile memory, we can immediately turn off the, the part that we, do, we are not using, and uh, we immediately turn on and start is, uh, information processing uh, using this, uh, this scheme. So uh, we can go to ultimate power, power, power gating. So, uh, and if you're not using it at all, we can uh, cu uh, cut off all the power. So there's no <coughs> static power involved. And we have mem memory in back gate, and actually I'm going to show you, show you in the next slide that it's, uh, the, the, it, it will be the part, it is part of the logic. So we can reduce the number of transistors, and uh, that, that suppresses the delay as well as hopefully dynamic power in many cases. 
So this is a diagram uh, that we, of this full adder. Uh, we have one, two, three, four uh, tunnel junctures. And as you can see, this is a, a logic block, and we use these uh, tunnel junctions to be a part of uh, logic. And in, in, thi in this particular case, we've been able to reduce 24% uh, of uh, uh, transistor count. Um, in other applications, we can reduce uh, as many as more than 60% of transistors. So it, it all depends on uh, uh, what, what sort of applications you want to apply uh, this technology to. Um, it's slightly, well, we, the design was such that the delay is approximately the same. Uh, dynamic power is uh, one-fifth. Uh, from, from CMOS realization, this is because our logic swing is much smaller and we do not need any static power to, uh, uh, for this circuitry. Uh, the, the part that uh, in, in this, uh, this is 2008 realization and at that time we didn't have a good magnetic tunnel junction. So magnetic tunnel junction usually required a huge transistor to switch because uh, its current density or it, requ it required a high current to uh, switch and that's the reason why we couldn't reduce uh, the, the area of the, of the block. So clearly uh, we needed to improve our, our magnetic tunnel junction uh, characteristics. Uh, these are uh, more recent uh, uh, realization. It's uh, published in VLSI 2011 uh, non-volatile uh, content addressable memory as well as uh, ternary content addressable memory. This, this one actually uses three terminal domain wall motion for, for, for non-volatile device. This one uses uh, a magnetic tunnel junction. Another thing that you, uh, you can do to play with magnetic tunnel junction is, is, is this. Uh, uh, using magnetic tunnel injection as a part of your uh, SRAM, for example. Uh, usually what happens is that uh, this uh, butterfly pattern, uh, is, it, it gives you the same area uh, when, you, when the two resistances are the same. But when you switch uh, the state, you, at the same time you switch the tunnel junction to, to make it to low resistance and high resistance uh, so that it favors your uh, signal to noise ratio. So in, in this case, uh, uh, you know, the, the area is much bigger uh, on, on this, the side that you're, you're now storing your information. This, this was published in SSDM 2011. Uh, so th there are many things that you can play with, uh, with tunnel junctions. Now, uh, the question is, uh, you know, how, how good your, your tunnel junctions are. Uh, it de determines how, how good this approach is. So this is a magnetic tunnel junction for VLSI, a wish list. Uh, we, we want to have many things. Uh, first of all, we want to have a small tunnel junction. It, it cannot be large, right? And it has to be scalable. A high output, at least, uh, we need uh, more than 100% TMR ratio, but it, it, it doesn't have to be very large because, because of the reasons uh, I, I just mentioned to you uh, when, when you're using two-terminal device. In two-terminal device, you have to have, well, or e even in three-terminal device, uh, you change the, the state of uh, the memory by current. So the switching current has to be low. Non-volatility also doesn't come freely. Uh, it has to have a, a barrier, energy barrier that separates, uh, you remember Jeff's talk, uh, separates the two configuration, anti-parallel and parallel configuration, and, and, and it has to be large enough uh, compared to your uh, thermal agitation. Uh, otherwise, it will not, no longer be uh, non-volatile. And it has to be at least 40 times kT, which is one electron volt, and hopefully, uh, it's better to have 1.5 or 2 EV for the barrier. But of course, these two are linked. Uh, when the states are stable, uh, you have to invest more current to switch. So there are many uh, materials or, or engineering issues uh, involved here. Uh, we prefer to the switching current to be approximately, if you're working with 90 nanometers, it has to be nine, less than 90 microamps 
or 45, 45, just the rule of thumb, because you don't want to have a huge transistor to run a small device. Uh, it has to be backend of the line compatible. And this is actually a, a big uh, issue uh, for, for us working on magnetic materials, because uh, people in, 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 in VLSI, they anneal the, the completed uh, VLSI at around 350 to 400, and that's about the maximum that, uh, that magnetic tonal junction can tolerate. So uh, we have to make sure that our, our device tolerates these. So these are, uh, you know, the, and we have to prove that we have infinite or virtually infinite endurance. We have to, well, this is already proven. Low resistance is okay. Uh, we can go to reasonably low resistance uh, for, for a couple of more generations because uh, uh, this magnetic tonal junction is used in, uh, in sensing a device for, for hard disk. And, and they are using very, very low uh, resistance device. Low error rate, um, this is something that we need to counter, and, and low cost is, after all, everything needs to be done at low cost. So, uh, I just want, want like to, well, it, it used to be very difficult to uh, make, sh uh, to have all these five attributes uh, in, in one device. So people prove that uh, these two are okay, or these two, three are okay, but, uh, it, it used to be very difficult to show a device that, uh, that, can, go, that can satisfy uh, five of them. But in, uh, okay, it's missing here. Uh, in 2010, we showed by using a standard, actually standard uh, MGO cobalt ion boron magnetic tunnel junction, using interface perpendicular anisotropy. I will not go into the details of why we need uh, perpendicular anisotropy. Basically, perpendicular anisotropy means that this is your magnet, and if uh, your magnet ma magnetization is pointing uh, perpendicular to the interface, you, you, you have perpendicular anisotropy. But usually what happens is that because of the magnetostatic energy, uh, you have this in-plane anisotropy. So when these layers are thick, uh, this uh, in-plane anisotropy wins, and uh, you don't get this, uh, this characteristic that I have shown here. So it's important to have this perpendicular anisotropy. And it, in, in order to have this, we have to have a, a large interface anisotropy, and also these uh, layers, the cobalt ion boron layers, has to be, have to be reasonably thin, uh, thinner than 1.5 nanometers. But in the end, uh, we succeeded in, in doing this, and, and here we, this 14 nanometer device, can be switched at 49 micrograms, so it's getting close. Uh, we want this 40 and 40, these two numbers to match, but uh, it's slightly greater than uh, 40, but still it's okay. Uh, uh, e over KBT is, uh, in, in this particular case, uh, uh, slightly more than 1 EV, with TMR ratio 120. So this is uh, the state-of-the-art uh, tonal junction. Uh, so. We, we made it to 40, uh, this is 113, uh, this, is, uh, this is actually a, a different device actually. But 48 microamps and 350 is okay. Uh, and uh, low resistance for low voltage operations, this is 16 ohm uh, micrometer square, which means that uh, this, this, uh, this device switches at uh, around 600 millivolt. And we can actually make it this one to two ohm micrometer square, so uh, the switching voltage can be can be close to uh, 100 millivolt. But of course, when you reduce the switching voltage, this is two terminal device, so you have to read the device, but at even lower voltage, and you have to worry about read uh, read disturbance, you know, write during read. So there, there are many design considerations. Okay, how far we can go? I, I don't want to go into the details of uh, physics of magnetism, but uh, I just want to point out that uh, in hard disk industry, people are using uh, mag magnets that are very small. Uh, these small grains are independent magnets that can store ma uh, magnetization information for more than 10 years, which means that uh, E over KBT is more than 40, and the dimension is already uh, somewhere around 5 nanometers, way beyond uh, what we are thinking 
uh, at the moment. So no volatility is there and also the material uh, sort of knowledge base is there. And this is a great advantage for us because uh, right next to us we are, we are, we are, there, there's a huge magnetism community working on magnetic materials and various magnetic uh, uh, physics and also there is a, a technology base, a magnetic recording technology, so we can tap on those uh, knowledges to uh, develop further uh, our devices. Okay, so, uh, but, but of course we have to do many things. We have to be able to uh, uh, have a, a nice array of them. We have to make sure that we can get a reasonable tunnel magnetic resistance and we have to be able to switch them by uh, a certain level of current and that's uh, a big challenge, uh, I have to say. So, uh, the last few perhaps minutes or, or so, uh, I would like to spend, uh, again, uh, it, it has been already mentioned uh, in the previous talks, but we've been using magnetic fields to switch magnetization direction encoding uh, our information onto magnets. Uh, which is not particularly energy uh, saving a and we're using currently spin polarized current to switch uh, magnetization direction which is uh, orders of magnitude uh, which consumes orders of magnitude less energy to switch magnetization direction but uh, if we can change the, the magnet magnetization just by applying uh, gate electric field or electric field it will also uh, allow us to further go down uh, well, uh, two orders of magnitude uh, lower energy in switching non volatile memory. So um, this is just a, a you know, back of the envelope calculation. Uh, for spin transfer switching, if we can get uh, 30 microamps, uh, half a volt switching in, in nanosecond, uh, that, that there's a the, the energy you have to invest uh, to change the state of uh, the non-volatile device is 15 femtojoule. Of course, this doesn't include the, the interconnection, so for, for system you have to uh, add uh, those uh, energy investment. Electric field switching, if, it's, if it can be done uh, at, let's say, 5 megavolt per centimeter, uh, which is reasonable, reasonably high electric field, then uh, we will end up having a 5.08 uh, femtojoule, so there, there are two orders of magnitude gap. So we are working towards this. Uh, so what we are doing now is to demonstrate, uh, uh, well, the first part we are, we are, we are trying to demonstrate in logic in memory integrated circuits uh, uh, using spin polarized current uh, and then we are also investigating uh, this approach to see if uh, we can uh, get, uh, 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 if we can uh, switch magnetization by electric field. So we've been working on, at low temperatures though, on a ferromagnetic semiconductor in, in, since 2000, or, or this one is 2008. We can change the, the magnetic phase by uh, applying gate electric field because uh, they are sensitive, the, the magnetic interaction is sensitive to uh, the number of carriers. We can change the direction of magnetization by, this is proof of principle uh, experiment at low temperature, but by modulating magnetic anisotropy, we can change 10, 10 degree uh, direction of magnetization by 10 degree. Uh, but these are low temperature and, and on ferromagnetic semiconductors, but recently uh, many, many groups, including ourselves, are finding out that you can do very similar things at, at room temperature. Uh, this is again cobalt ion boron MGO system that I have used for my uh, magnetic tunnel junction, but here uh, we've been able to show that we can modulate uh, the magnetic uh, ma this is uh, b basically magnetization versus field curve uh, a and we can modulate uh, the anisotropy of the system at room temperature. And this is because, uh, remember in, in the previous, one of the previous slides, uh, slide, uh, we, I have shown that, uh, that the anisotropy is coming from uh, interface 
and by changing the population of uh, carriers at the interface or family level uh, with respect to density of states, uh, we can change, modulate the, the anisotropy. And if you, can, if you do it quick enough, then you can start precession of uh, magnetization and uh, hopefully uh, in, we switch the magnetization. Uh, we haven't uh, gone that far yet. So, uh, this is a summary of my talk. Uh, integrating spintronic non-volatile memory element, which is magnetic tunnel junction with CMOS, uh, realizes low power, high performance, and standby power-free non-volatile VLSI. So, of course, it depends all on, uh, on applications. Uh, tunnel junction is now but much better positioned uh, than before. We have all five attributes at 40 nanometers, and uh, we have a 30 nanometer dimension in sight and beyond. Uh, once ready, this could trigger a major paradigm shift. And electric field switching can realize ultra-low power switching of magnetization. We, all of them uh, makes, uh, make us believe that spin tracks may revolutionize the way VLS sites are made today. Thank you very much for your attention. Thank you, uh, Professor Ono. Any questions? Uh, I just have a question about the escapability. You just say that, okay, I mean, based on your experiment, which is the state of the art, the diameter of the size of the magnet is 40 nanometer, and the stability was 40 kT, which is on the lower bond. Okay, then if, I mean, if you increase, I mean, decrease the area, then we are gonna lose the stability clearly. Uh, I saw you show that five nanometer grain size, but you didn't talk about the stability, and I know in hard disk drive for that small grain size, they usually, the corrosivity is really high. They use, for example, heat assistant or microwave assistant to flip the magnet. I just want to get your opinion. Yeah, so those small magnets, uh, stabilities are okay, five nanometers, but it's very difficult to write. That's, that's certainly true. So maybe I have some slides here. Uh, let's see. Yeah. Um, well, this shows the stability. The this is a barrier. Uh, so basically, this uh, energy barrier is uh, proportional to the volume, as, as you said. So uh, when you reduce the size, this volume goes down. So this uh, energy density has to go up. And in many perpendicular materials, we have uh, high energy density materials, so stability is okay. This is switching current. Switching current is also proportional to this uh, st uh, energy barrier. Intuitively, it has to be, because uh, when, you, when it's stable, you have to invest more current. So uh, th this has to, you cannot compromise. Basically, you, you, you want your device to be non-volatile, so, so this, this has to be one electron volt at least, and uh, hopefully two electron volt. And these are the, the things that you need to uh, uh, play with in order to reduce uh, switching current. And uh, there's only one term, alpha, which is uh, basically the, the resistance or friction uh, uh, against the magnetization motion. And this has to be reduced in order to keep uh, current down. And I'm not discussing about uh, uh, magnetic uh, TMR ratio and things. But these are the things that you have to engineer in order to go to smaller dimensions. So you have to, you have to develop materials. The material determines the scalability. Yes, uh, it's, it's absolutely true. Uh, our material looks like this. This is damping parameter alpha, this is the friction, and this is the anisotropy energy density. So, so you want to go in this direction, and you want to go in this direction. So this, this, this is the direction you want to go. And what you're referring to is, this is our material, uh, perpendicular ones, and uh, it cannot avoid uh, other uh, the, the trends, but, but, uh, but but alpha is an order of magnitude smaller. And, and this trend is, coming, is there because of the spin-orbit interaction. You want to use spin-orbit interaction to stabilize the magnet. But we don't know yet whether this is coming from really spin-orbit interaction or coming from the roughness. If, if it comes from the roughness, we should be able to reduce it by uh, 
making it. So even the same material, uh, without going into the material itself, we might be able to use, using, using the processing, we might be able to reduce it. And, uh, well, parenthetically, this is the target for 30 nanometers, and if you want to go beyond, you have to go into this green region. Thank you for your question. Okay, I think it's time to break for lunch, and we can continue the discussion over lunch. Let's thank Professor Ono for a very nice presentation. Thank you.